in the last video I um, showed how you could set up a multi-pattern analysis um, but one thing I did not show was the visual um, kind of seeing the particles move around and I said that in the next video I would do that so here's the video now it's still the same setup and I'm going to run the multi-pattern simulation for a field factor I'm going to put on um, the link to the previous video in I think above should be top right yes so um, I'm running for a field factor that I know that multi-pattern occurs and um, as you can see that's the same result okay this is uh, logged and then this is not logged so you see the exponential increase so but then the only thing I make changes to is adding some monitors so I click out of this and then I could select um, position monitor so I've already added them um, since I want to show the result I'm just going to edit the ones I already have so the particle monitors position monitors you can add any of these and these do different um, things so for example I'll start with um, the PIC position monitor I think that just gives um, a preview of the particles at the end time so let's see p2 the monitors particle position monitors which one is the first one i think this should be the first one yes so peak position monitor let's see yeah. so this one is um, pretty basic you just monitor the um evolution of the particles over time so you could specify your step width and then um so for your user point one seconds you could also make it smaller and then if you want an end time but I wanted to run throughout um, the simulation so that's for the first I think I could yes so that's this so I'm correct so that's this and then the result you have from this is I think I'll do it this way just show so what you have is is it no 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 now I'm not sure if it's this result that you have from this position monitor one Hmm. let's see I think it's I think position uh, monitor one gives this result so yes okay I got it position monitor one gives this result which also corresponds to the name and then you see um, the initial point you specify the particle and you could go through this by clicking on an animate fields or you could also click on the forward button on your keyboard and then you can see how the particles evolve over time so you could see that it's um, moving the electric fields of course is um, alternating and then like driving the particles left and right and then the particles are colored by the energy of the particle remember we started with five electron volts plus or minus um, plus or minus 50% or 100% so you could use a smart scaling and then you see the different energies of the particle as it evolves so something like this and then you could see it's a two-point multi-pattern because it goes um, to this point and then returns back to the alternate side on the other side of the cavity of the equator so you could go through this up until 9.9 .9 seconds 9 something seconds or you could just click animate and then this does it automatically so for me this is usually the most um, useful result so you see at least the order of multi and um, how the particles evolve but then you could also monitor these particles on a plane or oh, first of all the particle review I think that should be from this I would Look at it because yeah it takes a lot of time so i wouldn't want to run it again so particle 2d monitors no it's not this i think it's the last one so particle monitor on solid yes so what this does is um, you could specify a particular solid now the solids that you could specify the solids you haven't used before since i've already specified one with um solid one which is the solid we're interested in you could only now look at um, the um, particle evolution on the boundary or a material so i'll just go and edit i'll double click i hope i don't lose the result yes to edit this so what you have is um 
particle monitor on solid component one and then you have collision um, information that you want so you could get the current versus time the power versus time collision power versus time collision current and collision energy now when you check on the energy histogram then you can define the beam size so i would show exactly what this is so you could define the beam size and then the minimum energy and the maximum energy that you want to look at so it just gets statistics for the particles within this so within this range 0 to 1000 um, electron volts now in some cases some particles could exceed 1000 electron volts but then we are not interested in that because they already are um, above what we are looking for so the result you get from component solid one is um let's see first of all you get the collision information in that should be one the result is yeah so you get the collision information wave power i think no collision information yes so collision information not that so you have the collision power of component one and then you also have the energy which is grouped in beams of um, 10 I think if I should zoom it, you could see, yes, um, 10 um, electron volts. So what you saw here, the definition, the beam size, 10 electron volt. And then you have the energy in 10 electron volts, even the power also. I think it should be also be in 10 electron. Okay, no, that's just for the energy definition, the energy histogram, um, 10 electron volts. And then the maximum, the minimum is zero, and then the maximum is a thousand and yeah you could see the distribution of the particles and you see that for this particular um, field factor most of um, the particles um, fall between okay if i should say from one e to my one e to five um, of the particles most of the particles fall between um let's say 80 or something to um seven seven hundred something like that yeah the energy with the maximum being around 300 now also remember that from a, a material property for for niobium that we define the maximum what is that uh, materials yes the maximum secondary emission yield occurs at around occurs at around 300 300 electron volts so if you have um several particles having this um, energy so um, then you know that you have um, more particles being emitted so secondary particles being emitted which is why you also observe multi-party i think it will be interesting to see um, the energy distribution for the um, energy distribution of the particles for um, a field factor where multi-party does not occur i think i'll just leave that or maybe sometime later do that but i think this is enough and you could um try that yourself i think you'll see a different distribution maybe something like um just most of the particles having very little energy or um very high energy that you do not have secondary emissions so yeah that's that's for the particle monitor on solid then phase space monitor phase space monitor results you'd have um no this is particle monitor 2d now phase space monitor results so um i think first let me talk about the um 2d monitor so if you should go to this you just you could monitor the um evolution just along a plane a particular plane so if i could close out of this first i don't know why they made it so that you can't so if I should go to peak 2D monitor, then I could define um, a particular plane that I am interested in to study um, to see how the um, how the particles evolve. So it's kind of similar to particle um, on solid, so particle monitor on solid, but then this is just like strictly to a particular plane and you see the results that you have is a um, particle 2D monitor I define two on two different planes so if you should look at this which i think was on so particle 2d monitor one where is the definition i think i need to close this so um okay i can't until i close this so i define this um to be 
um what's this normal to the z plane so where is my z so this is my z so this is the normal to the z plane so you can also see the result that it's kind of like this and then i define the x mean the y mean i could preview this and then you see the okay um yeah so you see the plane defined so what you observe is the particular evolution on this particular plane so the result you have from that is this and then you could view it from this and still the same thing with the um, particle on solid monitor so you can only see this on one plane so you see the particles bouncing up and down but then it's actually going left and right too but yeah left and right up and down so that's what you have i mean for me i i hardly use this because i just use the particle monitor and then that gives me also this information and then i could just view at one plane and have this result then the second one i defined on the um normal to the x plane and this is what you have so it's kind of similar to what we had before so this is the field and then i could animate the field so it's similar to what we had from the particle monitor too yeah, so that's it and then the final one the phase the phase space i mean if you would need that i haven't really i haven't needed it for anything but um if you need that you could also define a phase um um particular interface space monitors and then you could okay i think i could try and do one so you could in your face space plot you could um put position either the z position or the absolute against your norm momentum you could also select gamma beta velocity or energy in the face place um phase piece plot i think axis should be the x axis and your ordinate should be the y axis so and then you also do the same um thing the step with and then um filter by source if you want to filter just um, secondary emissions or the primary um particles that were released so you could select that and for that i defined two the first one with the particle so and i'm position y position because i want to see how the change in um the radial position which is defined by y here and the normed momentum and i reduce the step width also and then i filter this by particle and then the second one i defined i filtered oh okay i think i made a mistake there i was supposed to filter this by secondary emissions but apparently i still selected uh -huh, particle one but okay Pfft. yeah my bad i still selected particle one i wanted to see the difference um um between the two of them so um the results you have you see it in your 1d result and face space monitor so you have for this and you have four different frames so i could just go down and then you see the distribution of the particles in the position um position on the x and then that's abscess and um, norm momentum on the ordinate so you could select position with velocity or something so it just gives the distribution the of the particles yeah so maybe if you have an interesting problem you could see um i mean maybe for beam dynamics simulation i, I don't know i've never used it for beam dynamics simulation maybe you could see some interesting um patterns some interesting arrangement of the particles but for this it's just uh, mostly on order that i could check the last frame oh no plot available why let's see some point is oh some point is said no plot available so i think all the initial particle release i mean this is what i think i'm not yet sure of it because um, honestly i've never really used this or had need for it but like i said if you had an application where you needed to see the phase um, space plot then you could use this so i think that for the times that we do not have results all the initial particles um, kind of were lost in the simulation so um i think it would have been better to see the emitted secondaries but yeah i mistakenly selected um oh and this is kind of distribution of all of them i mistakenly selected particle um twice so 
Um, and how long did this take? Let's see. Home log file. This took. Oh, 55 minutes. Okay. So just for one. So yeah, 55 minutes. Um, I think I'll stop it here so I do not belabor the point. Um, I wouldn't run another one and do a separate video for a mission for the um, secondary mission. So if you have any question, um, you could always ask in the comments. And yeah, I think that's that for this video. And the camera just went off again and back on. So um, bye.